and we are rich. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, the Jews said about him, Allah's hand is tied up, i.e. he does not give and spend of his bounty. Be their hands tied up, and be they accursed for what they uttered. Number two, the second deviation of tasbih, anthropomorphism. These people attribute to Allah that which he attributed to himself. But they do not declare Allah to be above the resemblance to his creatures. They focus only on the end of this ayah. There is nothing like him, and he is the all-hearer, the all-seer. The surah is surah 42, and the ayat is ayat 11. And they overlook the beginning of the ayat. If they had paid attention to the beginning, they would realize that there is nothing that is like unto Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would not have dared to say what they said, which is so utterly shocking, and which makes the heart tremble. Which is their suggestion that Allah has a hand, sight, and hearing, which is like our hands, sight, or hearing. Exalted be Allah far above what they say. They made their object of worship like the idols. Hence, the scholars of the Salaf said, the anthropomorphist worships an idol. They have uttered kufr by these words which take them beyond the pale of Islam. Among these people were Dawood al-Jawaribi and Hisham ibn al-Hakam al-Rafidi. These two groups were opposites in their hearsay. The former, Mushrikeen, raised the creation to the level of the Creator and made them equal to Him. While the anthropomorphist brought the Creator down to the level of His physical creation and likened Him to them. Exalted and sanctified be Allah above their lies and their misguidance. The deviants of the deniers who fall into these three categories. This is the third principle. A. A group who deny the names and meanings to which they refer. They describe the law in terms of absolute negation, what he is not. These are called Jahmiya. The fact of the matter is that their deviation is disbelief in Allah, just like the disbelief of the Mushrikeen. Group B. A group who affirm the names of Allah as words without accepting their attributes of perfection that they imply. They said, Rahman, the most beneficent, Rahim, the most merciful, without Rahma, mercy, Hakim, and wise, without wisdom. Qadir, the all-powerful, without power. Sami, the all-hearing, without hearing, etc. These are called Mutazila. A third group who affirmed seven of the Sifat al-Mani, the characteristics, namely, life, knowledge, power, will, hearing, seeing, and speech. But they denied all of the other attributes. These are Asharia. In the case of those who disbelieved in the names and attributes of Allah, those who likened his attributes to the attributes of his creatures, and those who denied his names and attributes, their misguidance is quite clear. Because they are opposing Allah and his messenger, disbelieving in the Quran and Sunnah, their position is quite clear and does not require further explanation. The ones who faultly belief, whose faulty belief needs to be exposed are the Ahl al-Qalam, the Islamic philosophers. 
and the scholastics, who claim that they are declaring Allah to be above any resemblance to his creatures. So they deny attributes of Allah which have been narrated in the Quran and the Sunnah on the basis that this may lead to tasbih, anthropomorphism, or thinking that Allah as being like his creation. So they resort to interpreting these attributes in a manner that takes them far away from their true meaning. Number five, the categories of attributes according to the scholars of Kalam. Sheikh Muhammad al-Amin ash Shankati, may Allah have mercy upon him, explained the methodology of the scholars of Kalam with regard to their classification of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He described what they affirmed and what they denied and where they fell into error and confusion. He discussed the Quranic evidence for ascribing these attributes to Allah and mentioned that it is not permissible to deny them in the case of Allah on the grounds that some of his creatures also have these attributes. Because the attributes of Allah befit his majesty and the attributes of his creatures are suited to their inability. The Shaykh explained that the scholars of Kalam who indulged in this matter produced what they call rational evidence which they put together as rational analogies and they de divided the attributes of Allah into six categories as follows. A. Sifa Nasiya the attributes referring to emotions, i.e. love, hate, etc. The second are sifa, mana, attributes which are part of the essence of Allah. C, sifa, manawiya, ejectionable, ejectable forms of the attributes which are part of the essence of Allah. <coughs> D. Safiya Falayla The attributes describing his actions. E. Safiya Salbiya Negative attributes. And finally, Safiya Sifa Jabiya Jazakallah care. Encompassing attributes. With regard to the attributes other than these, they regarded them as relative attributes with no real independent existence. Thus they caused a great deal of confusion. Judging the methodology of Kalam against the Quran and the Sunnah, Sheikh Ashen Kiti, may Allah have mercy upon him, explained what the Quran says describing the Creator with these attributes and describing his creatures with these attributes. The Quran states that the attributes of the creator of the heavens and the earth are true, and the attributes of the created beings are true, and there is no comparison between the attributes of the creator and the attributes of his created beings. The attributes of the creator and the attributes befit his divine nature, and the attributes of his created beings are appropriate to their imperfect state and their need of Him. The difference between the attribute of the divine and the attribute of the created is like the difference between the divine essence and the essence of the created being. Sifat al-Mani Sifat al-Mani according to the scholars of Kalam. The Sheikh explained that according to the scholars of Kalam the Safat al Ma'ani number no more than seven, and they deny all other attributes apart from these seven. According to the scholars of Kalam, the Sifat al Ma'ani are defined as being those which are part of the essence of Allah. The seven attributes which they affirm are power, will, and 